Hi everybody, so today I'm going to be showing you how to make an edit on a light motion and like how to do specific transitions and everything and you can completely copy this edit, no credit needed and it's all 100% free. So let's just get started. So first things first, you're gonna go ahead and open up a light motion, then hit the plus, and then hit create project. Hit image and video, find your audio and add that in. And you're gonna wanna listen to your audio and every time the color changes, like if you get a pre-split audio or every time you hear a beat, you're gonna wanna add like a keyframe telling you where it is. Like the way to add a keyframe is once the color changes, you're going to want to go to exactly when the color changes. And then you're just going to want to hold down on it right here at the top and then it'll turn red. And that's just like a little marker so your edit is on beat. So I'm just going to do that for the rest of it. Once you have all that done, you're going to go ahead onto your first marker and find your first photo and just add it in. And if it doesn't fit the frame the whole way, you're going to hit these three dots up here and hit fill screen. And that's just a simple way to make it, like, inside the actual edit, if that makes sense. Then when you go to your next red marker, you're going to want to trim it like that so it's on beat once again. And then just do that for all of your photos. Now that you have all your pictures added in, you just want to make sure that it's on beat, so go ahead and listen to it. So it's on beat. So now we're going to do a shake in, if that makes sense. So basically, you're going to hit your photo, hit effects, add effect, and then go ahead and find tiles in the distortion and warp category. Scroll all the way down, tap tiles, and then mirror it. Next, you're going to want to hit Add Effect again, and then go to Move and Transform, and then find Oscillate. And now, you're going to want to add two keyframes. It doesn't matter where, but on the second one, make sure that everything is at zero. So, that's just the way your picture is going to end, so it doesn't keep shaking. And right at the beginning, where your picture starts... You're going to make sure this keyframe, you're going to add the settings to whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. You can copy mine if you'd like. You just want to have like a shake in like that. And you can even like make it go through the whole picture. If that makes sense. So it looks like that. And you can also add a little bit of a squish to it if that makes sense. So you're going to want to go to distortion and warp and then find squeeze. Add two keyframes, and on the first one, move it up to 1.00. And then copy my graph, and then move your keyframe to the end. Also, if I sound like sick or like tired, it's because it's 3.30 in the morning right now, so maybe that's why. So here's how the shake turned out. Whoa. So it looks like that. And now the transition we're gonna do now is a zoom in. So you're going to want to go ahead, tap on your picture, go to move and transform, and hit this right here. I don't really know what it is. But add your two keyframes, and on the second one, zoom in as much as you like. You know what? There's not really a specific amount you have to zoom in, but just zoom in as much as you'd like. As much as you like. And then hit the graph, go in between your keyframes, and copy the graph that I'm using. And once you've done that, take your keyframe right here and move it all the way to the end. So it looks like that, like you're zooming in. And you're just going to go ahead and add tiles again. And then do the exact same thing. But this time you want to zoom in on the first keyframe, not the second. Copy my graph. 
Move your keyframe all the way to the end so it has like an actual zoom in. Like that. And then you want to do a slide. So what you're going to do is go to move and transform, add two keyframes again, and slide it the way that I am. Or you could do it the opposite way, it doesn't really matter. And then go ahead and copy my graph. So it looks like that. And then you want to go ahead and add tiles onto this one. You're basically going to add tiles onto every single one of your pictures. It just makes it easier to edit in the app so your pictures are like mirrored. Then go ahead and add two keyframes and slide it the opposite way you did of the first picture. Copy my graph. Move a keyframe to the front. So this is what the edit looks like so far. So it's a zoom in, a slide. Now we're going to do a slide up. What you're going to want to do is add two keyframes again on move and transform. And then just slide your picture up. And then copy my graph. Once again, I know it gets really repetitive. But it's just how the app works. So then it looks like a slide up. And then add tiles and mirror it. I know I sound really weird and I'm really sorry about that. And now you're going to want to slide the picture down. So it looks like that. Now we're going to do a spin. So you're going to want to hit this like square with the arrows, add two keyframes, and then spin it to negative 90 degrees. Then copy my graph. So it looks like that. Go ahead and mirror it again. And this time, at, when you add two keyframes on the spin, you're going to want to move it to positive 90 degrees. Copy my graph. Move your keyframe so it's smooth. And it looks like that. So now I'm going to show you how to do um, a tile shift. So you're going to want to go ahead and go on to distortion and warp. Go down to tile shift. And basically you can put any amount you want. I just put like a really basic amount so it looks like even and nice. Like I'll do this much. I will do... 5.5 and I'm going to copy the effect for the second picture as well add two keyframes on the first one turn it down to zero because you don't want it looking like that at the beginning of the picture on your second keyframe go ahead and put the strength at whatever you want there's not any really specific amount I usually just put it at a random one copy my graph move your keyframe to the end like that and then you're going to want to go ahead and copy the effect we'll paste it Set the strength to something a little bit higher than before, and on the second keyframe, set it to zero. Now copy my graph, and move the keyframe to the front. So it looks like that. Now I'm going to show you how to do a, like, now I don't know how to explain it. It's like a fold, I guess. So you're going to want to go ahead, go on to where you use the zoom in panel. Hit this little infinity thing in the middle, add two keyframes, and then scroll the first section right here like this. Copy my graph. Looks like that. So on this picture, you're going to want to do the exact same thing. But instead, on the first keyframe, you're going to want to scroll it. And then copy my graph. And then keyframe to the front so it looks like that. Kind of like a fold open, if that makes sense. So now I'm going to teach you how to do a, um, a pinch and bulk, if that makes sense. I don't really know if I'm saying that right. So set the strength to zero. Add two keyframes. And on the second one, go all the way down to negative 1.00. Copy my graph. And set the radius to 600. So it looks like that. So it's like it's like that. It's like pinching out. Make sure to put your keyframe all the way to the end. Like that. And now you're going to want to go ahead and do the exact same thing again. But instead you're going to want to make the strength 1000. If that makes sense. I, that's what I always think of it at. 1.00. Add two keyframes and on the second one set it to zero. 
And don't forget to make the radius 600 again. So it looks like that. And now you're going to do zoom out. So you're going to want to go ahead, go back to the zoom in panel, add two keyframes, and on the second one, scroll it the opposite way you did before. And then copy my graph. Don't forget to mirror it. I did. And go ahead and add motion blur onto everything too. Basically how you make a free edit on A Light Motion. Um, I'm gonna be back and show you how to loop it and add coloring. Okay, so the way you loop it is you have to save your project first by hitting this thing right here. Go ahead and tap on it, hit export, and then you gotta wait for it to save. When it's all done exporting, you're gonna go ahead and hit save video. Open up and make a new project on A Light Motion, and then add in the edit you just made, but make sure the opacity is all the way down. Add the same edit on top of that, but make sure the volume is all the way down. Scroll to where the end of your edit is, where it zooms out, like right before the screen turns black. Cut it off like this. Hit this right here. Hold down on this, and then go ahead and add in the same edit again, but just make sure that it's turned all the way down. And scroll to the part where the shake is. Like where the shake starts, right here. And then you're going to want to go ahead and move this all the way down to where you added your little red marker. Also, I don't know why I called it a keyframe earlier. It's definitely not a keyframe. It's just like a marker to tell you where to add your pictures in. So you know how it zooms out right here? You're going to want to go ahead, add tiles, and zoom it out again. That doesn't really make sense, but it'll look a lot better once you're done. So go ahead and zoom it out a little bit like this. And then copy my graph and move your keyframe to the front. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. So it looks... You can be done with your edit right now if you want. But I'm going to show you how to add a coloring. So you're going to want to go to like a frame where you can see the picture clearly. And then go ahead, add effects, color, and light. And then go to colorize. And I usually make my edits a little bit pink. But you can literally make them whatever color you want. It does not matter. But I'm just going to make it a little bit pink. And then what I usually do is go to exposure and gamma. And turn the exposure up so you can see it a little bit better. And then you can add in your watermark like your Instagram name. Or whatever you want by going ahead and tapping the plus in text. So I could just add in my name right here. You could pick whatever font you'd like. I usually do this font. Well, that's my new font that I'm doing. It is Dancing Script Bold. And then you're going to want to go to Move and Transform. And then just zoom it in a little bit just so you can see it. And then add your watermark wherever you'd like. I usually put it like down here. And I make the opacity like that much so it's like transparent so it looks a little bit cooler if that makes sense. And yeah that's basically how you loop your edits and add coloring on them. So this is the finished product of the entire edit. forgot to add it in on the other one just hit copy effects and then go ahead and add it in on your other one just like that so there you go and i really hope this video helped some of you guys out because i know a lot of you were asking me to make this so i hope it helped you out and sorry if my voice is annoying and sorry for all the weird like big crackling noises I'm in my bed, so, I mean, it's 3 in the morning, can you blame me? But yeah, anyways, I hope this video helped you guys out, and I love you all so much, and comment down below any more tutorial requests or anything.